Hello everybody, my name is Demarcus Mitchell, aka Buzz Lightyear, aka D Mitch Entertainment Productions LLC. And today I'm coming at you with a product review. Now this product is not brand new out the box. I don't have any instruction manuals, any software, anything. In fact, this has been used before. I got this on I got this from I did a uh, sound system tune up at a church and the guy said he had this in the back. And I want to try it out. Before I continue, let me explain something to y'all. I'm a person that is very big on consoles, as in, I believe I want knobs and faders and buttons in, in front of me on a big mixing disc. Uh, I believe in that. I believe in the digital mixing discs. I believe in the analog. What I didn't like at all was the digital rack mount mixers that needed an iPad or a computer to mix because I'm not that type of person. I needed faders. I came up with every excuse to hate these things because I'll tell you why I hate these things. I hated them. I hated them with a passion. I, I, in fact, I called my business partner and told him that, oh, um, I, you know how much I hate these things and talk so bad to God on me and all this. I'm now a changed man because of what I discovered after trying this little thing out. And I want, and hopefully after this video, you too will also be feel just like me and give these things a try. So if you're just like me, don't believe in these uh, tablet, iPad, computer mixers and stuff, there's still hope for us. <laughs> Because after you try these things and see the ink, how convenient they are and what all they can do, you can, you can kind of give up the actual big console, the faders and all that stuff that's involved with it. You can kind of let it go for something like this, but I wouldn't say I would use this for a main, main rig. I would use this for something small or what I need this to be minimalistic space. And this thing actually came around at a good time because Saturday I have a gig with a band and where they're going, the location they're at is a small location. Um, first time I did sound there, I did put a little table right there by the stage and had my mixer on it. And it worked out well, but there's a door right there that's coming through their kitchen and stuff. And for this placement of mixing for the room I wasn't there I just put out sound into the room I did not know how if it was really received by everybody the other times after that I did it it was kind of if uh, I was in the back of the room I kind of set up this little cart this thing I was right by a pool table and had to, have to turn off the arcade one of the little dark machines so I could be right there I was in the way and it, it just wasn't a very, the place is a small place. The stage is kind of small, kind of big, small. It, 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 stage is all right. It's doing sound in there that's like, you got to have what I'm about to introduce to y'all today. And that what I'm about to introduce to y'all is the Behringer X, XR Air, Behringer X Air XR 16. That's this little box right here. You see, it looks so pretty, doesn't it? It's so cute and delicate. But this thing is a beast. And I tell you that because when you see all the features and functions and things that this thing can do, this thing is worth its weight. And it will make anybody change their outlook on consoles versus iPads and computer mixing. It will make you change that. Hey, I'm here to t talk to you through that and give you my review on this product and why I'm not falling in love with it. Like, I want to go. I'm borrowing this right now. Um, and I gotta give it back next week. But as soon as I get some money, because I'm broke right now, okay? I I do not have any money to get forward anything right now. In fact, my phone is off because I don't have money. So if you've been trying to text me and call me these past two weeks or so, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, y'all should donate to my little GoFundMe for my business. So we can afford better things so we can serve our serve y'all serve our clients better okay so yeah if it's a dollar go ahead and do that donate i'll come back to that at the end of this video but i want to get y'all into this beast of a machine right here 
So this is, like I said, it's the Behringer X-Air XR16. They come out with the XR18, which is the bigger brother of this. They also have like two other, they have a smaller version of this, the XR12. Um, and they have another version that's like, it actually looks like a little mixer and stuff, except for you can put your iPad in it and just the plate is right there. But let's let's just go ahead and hop into this. Please give this, before anything, please give this a video, a like, a comment. Please subscribe to the channel. If you're on social media, follow me on here. Uh, add me as a friend. Let's connect. Let's do some business. Let's do some life changing things. Anyway, so let's get going into this. What is this box? It is a digital rack mountable mixer. You can actually mount this in a rack. I just don't have, like I said, I don't have the box or anything with me. I have the, um, when the guy gave it to me, he just gave me the box and the power cord for it. So that's all I have. Um, I can tell you this. This what, 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 even though it's just this right here, this box is still enough for me and it's blowing my mind. So it is a digital mixer, rack mountable. Um, it, there's on this front panel, there's completely nothing but inputs and outputs. The only knob on this channel is this headphone amp right here. That's the only knob. Everything else on here is inputs and outputs and lights. And an antenna. We'll get into that. Oh, so starting with the first row, let's start right here with your inputs. You have eight on this top row. You have eight Midas. I think they're Midas preamps. Um, you can plug either XLR or a quarter inch cable into there and be good. On the bottom row, you have eight uh, TRS quarter quarter inch inputs and two of those on the end which is 15 and 16 right here have high Z on it so I'm guessing high pass oh all the audio books please comment in the video tell me what I'm saying wrong I know is you plug a car to that and it sounds amazing you can plug guitars and whatever you want into these two right here you be straight be straight come on to the bottom row do you have your outputs we're gonna start this way so from your from your left to your right you have four auxiliary um outputs there xlr um and then you have two dedicated main left and main right outputs those are both xlr then you have the standard um quarter inch headphone jack out which and that's about all for inputs except for the power cable on this side right here now we're going to go to this top row um starting from this side of going working our way down we have this antenna right here so this antenna what comes in this box is actually already a router already in the box itself but according to everybody else and reviews it's not the best router if you get one, make sure that you stick this thing up in the air. Have you seen mine is missing the little like piece that goes on the outside? So, oh, uh, I have problems connecting to it. And I was just thinking, you know, I could just port this to my device, computer, whatever it work. No, they prefer, they, they pref the company itself said you need to stick this thing up in the air. So, if it's laying down on the side like this, if it's up like this, Make sure that router is sticking up in the air. I promise you, when I was doing these uh, playlist thing, none of the ads popped up until I started recording this video. Let's skip that. That's the rant later. Anyway, they said that this antenna needs to be stuck straight up but it's not the best antenna because uh yeah i'm gonna explain that more on down the line as we go so then you got the little antenna holder right here next thing you have the input have is a usb you can take a flash drive plug it in here and record your whole 
So, so this is, you can record two channels. I say like that. You can record your main left, main right, or you can record like if say you're at doing a spoken word somewhere, channel one is um your mic, your vocal mic, and channel two is the music, somebody playing off the thing, the DJ. You can record those two channels or channel three is your audience and you want your audience and your vocals recorded, you can record channel one and channel three and your music will not be, channel two will not be recorded ever. That's the only drawback. It doesn't offer multi-track um, recording through this USB. Now you connect it to a computer, you know you may get multi-track. You may. I haven't tried it yet, but I think you can. Moving on. Well, you can plug your flash drive into this and get that done. It also had next one we have we have two um, MIDI ports. We have an in and an out, so you can record both the track maybe from there. I haven't tried it yet. I have MIDI cables around, but I don't have a MIDI box or interface, so I can't even try to tell you. I wish I could, cause I got some things that's also MIDI here too that I want to try, and I can't. Isn't that lovely? Now we come into this Ethernet port right here and a switch. This switch has three different settings. The first one I just explained to y'all about is with this antenna, you have settings access point, you have Wi-Fi current, and you have Ethernet remote or remote Ethernet, which whatever one of the ways you want to say it. Access point is the, the mixer's built-in router this little antenna right here that's pointed up there. Like I said, people say it's not the best. So they prefer you to get another router instead. But one of the other connections you can use is the second one is the Wi-Fi client. Say you already have a big um, network already set up. You have um, you have a church or a school or whatever. You have a pretty lovely, amazing, out of this world Wi-Fi service around campus. You can actually tap into that and connected to that Wi-Fi and then run your devices off of it. Um, then after that, you have what I'm using right now, which is the remote Ethernet or Ethernet remote, which is when you can go and take, go buy a router out of Walmart, cook it up here, and then run your, um, run everything from this mix, this, this, uh, router does have no internet. That's why you see the little red dot right here. There's no internet connection to it, so it's not connected to the web. I can't go searching on it, but it has enough I can output to my multiple computers and tablets and stuff like that. And it's on a private network that I had to go look at my phone for the password for this, so I know that people are not going to guess what the password for this thing, so I can take this on a gig, not worry about anybody coming onto my line and hijacking the mixer or trying to use it has a Wi-Fi it gets crowded up that I can't do what I need it to do. Also, the good thing about this is that I can take, I got like an extra long Ethernet cable on this. So say this is on the stage, it's on down there on my amp case and we're in a, and we're gonna try this out Saturday. I promise you these ads was not on this, was not on this. It just started. Mm. It's driving my train of thought. Oh, I can take this router, put it up somewhere in the ceiling or on the wall or shelf somewhere. And I can get access to it, make sure it can hit all my devices. Has well has while the box is down on the stage and it's cables are going. I ain't got to worry about posting the box up there and, and let people see the cables hang down or um trying to make sure my key cables reach i got this ethernet long cable i'll be all right um the only thing is when you get this out the box brand new you have to use the access point on the router to get everything set up it has to connect to your ipad or computer however you plan to set it up and then from there you would have to go and adjust the make it so that you can use a router with it so, and then you can use the remote access, remote ethernet or the Wi-Fi client. Until then, you have to use the access point that's built into it. 
So that is the box and the power switch is on this side. Oh, that's the unit itself. And after that, we move on to the software side of things. That's where your computer comes in, your uh, iPads, your tablets, and stuff like that. It, you can use this on a Mac MacBook. You can use this on an iPad. You can use this on a PC, like a Windows computer. The only thing you can't use it on mixing wise for your main mixer is a Android tablet. But I'm gonna come back to that in a second because they actually have an app for the Android, but it's not a main mixer, it's a sub mixer. I'll explain that in a little bit. But now we're going into the um software. So we're kind of them side, you know, just plugging things up over here. We're gonna go into the software, and so I'm gonna bring y'all closer so we can check out the software real quick. Do y'all mind? Am I okay? The top of the most awkward is uh, wow. Top of the most awkward is uh. As you can tell, it's storming. Pray for me, y'all. Y'all can see that nice, lovely. Okay, so let's get into this. So we are on the software domain. I recorded the video earlier and for some reason it did not save and my phone turned off but yeah we gonna make it do what it do so like I said you can use this on a MacBook you can use this on an iPad I'm using it on both today so I can show you and you can see what I'm doing in real time one thing I love about these things is this is this it's a little childish thing but I just love it Everything works in real time. So had you see me lifting this fader on my tablet, and you can see it on the computer, I love that. That's amazing to me. It's like when you go in the studio or you go to uh, get into the iMac automation mixers and you do something on your tablet or something, you see the mixer do it. Or do the studio work, you place it on the computer and you see the mixer, the mixing board do it. That, I'm sorry, that's just amazing to me. <laughs> But moving on, so once let me set this up and back out because I was working on this. What you see is what I see on my tablet. The same setup right here. You got uh, mic one, mic two, mic three, mic four, so forth and so on. I can go do something right here. Hey, y'all can see it being done up here. Okay. Let's we, 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 we have established that. Let me see if I can make it more user friendly for y'all. Anyway, so getting into it. This is your what you're introduced to, your main home setting. As you see, these are your channels right here. This is your channel strips, you know. And we're gonna go through each of these features on. You have your um, subgroups and all this over here. So let's just go through it real quick. First, you, you know, you this is your mixer board. This is your faders. Let's start right here. You can click on these and you can tap on them on the iPad. This is your um, game um, port right here. You see you have your microphone gain right here. Uh, you have your pad. You can link channels one and two, or channels three and four, channels five and six. You can choose this to be a mic input from the your analog inputs up here, digital outputs, or you can do it the inputs via USB. You also have your high frequency things right here. You turn them on and off and help you. Next you have your sins. These are all your bus sends right here. 
is like your subgroups, your auxiliary. But these are your auxiliaries right here. So you can choose how you want to send those out. Um, let's see, bring those down. Right here you have your post EQ. Uh, and right here you have your effects. So I'm going to bring those down as well. Like I said, I prepped this last night for a show this weekend. Um, you have right next, you have your gate, you have your dynamic gate, you have your EQ right here, um, you have your insert, which is the effects, and that's all the effects I'm running right now on this mixer. Uh, you have your preset where you can go and name this channel preset, whatever you want, and save that channel preset for something else in the future. Uh, and then you have your output. This is like your left and right. Um, your panning. And you say which groups you want to go to. It will meet groups you want. And you can also make it do auto mix. I haven't tried this feature out yet. But you can make it do that. Um, and that's that part of it. That's the channel strip. As you see, I've done something to this. And everybody else's is all set up. I'm gonna go and change that real quick. Let me show you how easy and effective this thing is. Bring you down, bring you down, bring you down. Bring y'all down. I'm just gonna basically go and erase them my um, settings. Because now, I this five minutes ago before I started this video, 10, how long before this started video, I uh, went and did some things on here that, yeah, I'm just going to bring all of them down right here. Excuse me if I'm doing all these little setting changes and stuff. I'm going to come back to these for a reason. There's a reason why I'm just setting everything to be uh, you know what that's not even when that didn't work either. There's a reason I'm just going so you see I've changed all this up here that's all gone. We can scroll through this and see all that stuff is gone. I'm up here. Because I'm going to show you these functions. So, let's get into it. Let's get into these functions on here. Oh, uh, that's not supposed to be soloed. So, so I'll make sure we, we are all straight. Also, what I didn't show y'all is that was your channel strip. Now, let me show y'all this features over here. So, that we come, we can see, we got, that we zoom across, we got our main channels. And then we have our fixed channels. I'm using reverb, delay, tube, and chorus. I wish I could present it to y'all better. Oh. Um, and then we also, at the end right here in this little channel selector series right here, you can select which channel fader you want to, your main master faders over here. Oh, but let's, let's so we're going to stay at main for right now. Also, you can, here's your solo clear, so say if all these are solos are on, you can just click right here and clear all of them out. If you need to go find something real quick that helps. You have your mute groups right here, so you can mute group one. If I mute group one, that's the vocals right here. I'll mute group two, that's the instruments. If I mute group three, that's the drums. Four, don't have a group yet. Oh, uh, then you do your auto mix on X and Y. Oh, uh, then we can, then we have 
channels. Okay, so layers. That's what they call it. Excuse me. Layers. What layers is, is so you can come here, you have your, um, you can choose all channels. You can choose... You can choose all these channels. You can choose channels 1 through 8. You can choose channels 9 through 16. But what I love is when you get into these channels right here. Your DCAs and effects. This is going to play a major part. And on mine, I have my DCA set up for vocals. DCA 1 set it up for vocals. DCA 2 set up for instruments. DCA 3 set up for drums. DCA... DCA 4 is my effects master for all my effects. And then you can also, there's also a aux in uh, you can choose right here. I'm not using that at all though. And then you can go and edit and add layers and stuff like that. So let's go back to all channels. And then I want to turn you up to this part right here. So we press this, this your meter. So like if we was at live show, all these would be going right here. Your aux in would be going. They would tell you how much you're feeding into your sense and they're not going sky high with sound. How much your return, effects returns is. How much your buck sin, your these are your effects sins, yeah. These are your bus sins, how make sure that your auxiliary sins, make sure they're all not sky high. Your uh, USB sins, there'll be nothing going to unless you're using USB. Your P16, how can you connect the Behringer P16 uh, personal monitoring system to that? You can see what the main master mix of that going out would be. You have your main left and right right here with your ground between it. And then you have your solo one and two channels. You have your gain reduction, gain reduction, gate thing reduction, um, dynamics. So you can see what which one of those have the gates on and off. Then we go back, go to shows. So you can save your scenes or shows. For example, if I was at, I have this show coming up. Let's know, let's use this for example. The band I'm doing sound for just did the Peach Festival in Ruston, Louisiana. If I was doing sound for the Peach Festival, I had this band plus three other different bands that I could sound check them the day before. I would come over here, say, sign this Peach Festival show right here, and on this one, put in each of these bands' different names. And so when they come up on stage, all I would do is click that, and they names, they settings and stuff for each mic and whatever inputs would pop up. And I just got to do fine tweaking there, or hopefully no tweaking at all. It just works. <laughs> For and then example of like the next day, it was on that peach festival was on Saturday. Sunday we have a gospel show somewhere. I can come over here on show, put gospel show over here, and then do another scene selection for that gospel show. Pull them up for them bands, groups, artists that's coming up there, speakers, and go from there. So we can go back on that now. Snapshot. You can go in here and turn, like, say if I have this on, you can click this and set everything, and you can see what's on and where, where what is going to what on here. This says church. This person I borrowed this from, the, like I said, it was that church. I'm borrowed from them. Then I have my setting right here, D Mitch Entertainment. Right now it's on D Mitch Entertainment right now. So then you have effects. I love this. Okay, so you can have a total of four effects going on at the same time. I have Ventus Room Reverb. I have three tap delay. I have stereo tube stage for that warm tube sound. And I have stereo chords. You can click on the actual little picture of the, the effect thing. And you can pull it up. You can go and change all these numbers in here. Set it how you want to. I love this. And it was crazy about it that back in the day, effects was something that wasn't on a computer or something. Like you the way that you have to go buy amplifiers now and the actual um some big some of them big rack mountable um microphone um re receivers. That's how effects was back in the day. And you have to actually go buy them things. 
pull them in that rack. And now we just have them, all these effects on computer screens and the mixers and stuff like that. And we ain't got to worry about nothing. Not going out to buy extra effects or something like that. If we want to buy effects, we just go online, purchase them like they plug in, put them into the mixer or whatever, and call it a day. And that's crazy. If you want to edit these effects right here, like you want to change out for effects later, you want you may not like vintage room reverb. You just want a hard reverb. You can go click on this little edit button right here. That yeah, it will pull up all these effects right here, and you can click on the one that you want. I don't see all them different effects. That looks nice, don't it? I know. Oh, you can add, you can send this to left and right, or you can turn, press this little button and it just go to the right or whatever without processing, bike the bypass. That's what it would be. Um, then, well, we got the effects. Routing. So, I had fun with this thing last night because I, I'm going to explain to you how I got here. So, routing, just, hey, you see this little thing? walk down is going down you got you got to tell okay i want channel i want my first fader to read channel one my second fader to read channel two and stuff like that but if you want want to and you just want that one channel to read all these channels at the same time you would clearly click over here all these channels over here but i want mine on individual channels you can do this for your input. You can do this for your USB return. You can do this for your USB outputs. You can do it for the P16 outputs. I see something right here. Okay, I don't know what that is. You can do it for your auxiliary output. Now you see right here, there's nothing right here. If y'all ever want to know, on this mixer, if you are trying to push sound out on buses and it's not coming through them auxiliary things, here's why. You got to scroll all the way over to where, see up here where it's at the top where it's like channel one, channel two, channel three. You got to scroll over till you get to auxiliary in the mix the uh, effects left, right, and two, four, all that, till you get to bus one, two, and three. Then you can put your auxiliaries right here on them buses going down, and you'll be okay. And then you have your main output, so you can do this too. Okay, so we have done through all this. Uh, yeah. You know, you got mute, all this stuff. You got your effects and all this. What is this on your... Yeah, you got your effects for your main. So... Remember when I said that subgroups and things like that that you can do with other ta the Android tablet? Let me introduce you to my little Android tablet right here. It was supposed to be open, but I guess it's not. But we're here. This is what the Behringer Air X Air Q app looks like on this tablet. If you turn like this. on this so like in this stage if i wanted to go and add something to this i have so this app for example i'm going to give this to my drummer saturday so he can have his own individual mix that's what this thing can do give you your own individual it's like personal in ears monitoring you just gotta run a xlr line from the one of these auxiliary ports for set my drums on channel auxiliary three run a XLR out from that line to a, another little like mini mixer that some drummers carry with them and they can put their headphones into it or you can if you got a headphone rack headphone amp like six um headphones coming out of a headphone rack amp then you can take that plug that into one the individual port of that headphone rack and mix uh give those different mixes for the band I'm not pulling out that rack. I have a wireless rack. It only got two in inputs. So I'm going to give one to my drummer and one to, and the rest of them going to the band. So on the back of it, I'll plug into like one of my ports on there, put the drummer on his own frequency, put the rest of the band on another frequency, 
and then give this tablet to my drummer and say, hey, this is yours. You mix what you want out of this. So what he can do right here, he wants to mix things. As you see, it's a blank state. I'm already going to have this set for him, though. I'm going to press this right here. So this is going to be my first channel. And as you see, that pulls up all my own um, people and bosses that's working right now. I'm going to make channel one the vocals. So, yeah, I haven't... And excuse me for etiquette. I have it not went over y'all with what I have. So I have these people set up for Saturday. The lead singers for this group is Jai, Dewetty, Dave, and Rodney. This is Rodney's band. He kind of, he, he's the band leader of this. So he had four singers on there. He plays keys. So he cops it on mic every once in a while. But I have his mic right here. That's why he's four, because he always hops on the mic every once in a while. But he's kind of the MC of this group. Jazz, the kind of lead vocalist, I guess. They they both lead. All three of them lead. The lady, I'm surprised she come back because she moved. But yeah, oh. Um, so I'm doing four singers. I got they mics already set with their names and colors correspond to them. That's also one thing I did not show y'all how to set up these channels. Um, and then I have Rodney's talk back. Uh, Rodney's gonna be talking back to the band, telling them, Hey, this is what we're gonna do next. So I have his talk back set up. Then I have the kick and the overhead going to the preamps, and then from there, outside the route, the rest of my instruments do the chord inches. So my keys, guitar, and my bass guitar through there. My bass may be moved up to that, um, this empty, um, preamp on the top. And then over here, like I said, I got my effects. So, that's them. So, on this tablet right here, I want my vocals to be on channel one or the, a group channel. We're going to make a group channel for him for he have his vocals, the instruments, and the drums. So, what I'm going to do is press this button right here, pull up these little these people, all these people names and instruments and stuff. And I'm going to press Jai, I'll turn Jai on channel one. Turn Dewey on channel one. Turn Day on channel one. Turn Rodney on channel one. So now, while I unpress this button, I have a fader, and that is going to be the master vocal, um, the vocal channel for it. If I want to get my instruments done, I'm going to press the second button over here, and do my instruments, my keys, my guitar, my bass guitar, and then unpress that, and there's another fader pop up right there. Also, since you're already in this screen, what you can do, you can press, like, so we need to get drums into the third channel. The drums won't be able to hear himself. And won't hear himself, obviously. So we're going to press that third button over here. Now we can go pick out the kick drum and the overhead. And it pops up with the three right here. So each of these little buttons up here telling them what number each of these channels are on. So now we have instruments, vocals, and drums going to that. But remember, I said Rodney has a talk back mic, so you can talk back to the band. We're going to put, go press this one down here, and we're going to put Rodney's talk back mic on his own channel. So now when I unpress these, that button, that four channel button, I have four faders. So these are your main vocal. And on for this, since we, we're here, I'm going to pull up bus three. So you're going to see bus three happen in real time with this. Remember, I wanted my vocals on the same channel. So I'm going to lift up channel, my vocal channel up to the, uh, what is it, neutral. So it's up here. As you see, all my vocals just went up on here. They're corresponding. So not only is Ant making his mix, I can see on my iPad or my computer what Ant's mix is looking like. So I see, okay, he got his, he's doing his vocals now. Let me lift up my instrumentation. Oh, scroll over right here. There's keys, guitar, and drums. I'm lifting them up to the neutral. And you see, my drums and everything are now my instruments up there in neutral. Now I'm going to bring up his drums to the neutral. Now he has his drums there. And then we're just going to go back, get Rodney's top back mic in there. We're going to lift that up. Flip. 
pull them up a little bit higher above everybody so you can just hear where it's going on. Now we have that dialed in. But if it turns this tablet to the side like this and press this button right here that just showed up, he can get a more in-depth mix to all everybody. So say if he wants, let's go back over to this way, he wants less of he likes the way Jive sound on this song. He wants to hear more Jive over everybody else. He can boost Jive up a little bit. Maybe the way they and Dave, they're background singers right now. He don't want to hear them. So he can turn both of them down a little bit. Rodney is emceeing, but he wants to be able to hear what Rodney is about. Rodney's about to come out with a hype song because normally when Rodney gets on the mic, he's hyped all day every day so we can he can go and tune that fine tune that then we got Ronnie's top back mic right there it's already been boosted up but let's say let's go over to instrument world real quick let's just say he wants he don't want that much kick drum. he wants more kick than he wants overhead so he can go in here and boost those that kick drum up a little bit and then he can go turn them overheads down a little bit. See the little fader moving? Yeah, we, 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 we fancy with it. And then come over here, you see keys right here. Let's say he wants, keys to fine. He wants, he love Eric's playing guitar, but he wants hear less of the guitar and more of that bass guitar from Randy. So we gonna boost up the bass a little bit, turn Eric's guitar down a little bit, and maybe also just turn Rodney's keys down just a little bit. And now it has been set his mix on here. So when he turns his iPad up back here, this button shows up again. We can press that. And now we're at the, now it's the faders over here have kind of adjusted themselves. But this is a master fader. And then if he swipes this way, this is Buster's three masters fader. So you can see that master fader right there. You can turn that down. If everything is just too loud, you can turn it up. And so he has com complete control of his mix. Complete control. And that, if I have some more of these tablets, I'll give it to everybody in the band. Because that's less of mixing I have to do on my end. I don't. I just worry about the stage monitor that I'm going to sit down Saturday in the house. And that's all. So, and right now, I'm thinking about adding a sub to that. So, I need to add a sub channel to. I, channel 4 right now is nothing. So, that may be my sub channel. Um... So how I have it set up, I have my mains. This is what my mains are looking right right now. I have nothing set or EQ'd on it. Oh, let me go back to uh, the drum channel, Bus 3. Because I forgot to show y'all something on here. Let me turn this back around to bring y'all the whole end up. If Ant wanted to, and just come over all the way over here, you see right there, y'all those those are the effects channels let me show you bring y'all to the effects of so and wanted to hear these effects too and he can just give himself a little reverb he can give himself a little bit of delay he can give himself some warm tube sound he can give himself the, the chorus and he can hear the effects that the and customize them of uh, how no, however he wants them to sound so if you want to have them effects from them singers coming through he can do that and have his mix like in his ear perfect jamming out in his own little world that, so I think that's neat that he can mix effects in too as well as he can get that raw audio from the mic so now we're going back over here to us like I said I have my effects on my main going I can you can just bring these down um so, but I've showed you all that. So let's actually get sound going into this thing. So, we're about to get sound going into this thing. I am using a Sure drum microphone. This came out of a Sure drum pack. Uh, this is the only microphone I have on me at the moment. When I found it, it I found like three other my other microphones. 
and cables. So again, yeah, I'm mixing. Also, I'm coming out of see that little studio amp right there. That's what we're using as our main for tonight. Because I need, I ain't got my system with me. It's on campus at the PAC. I need to go get it tomorrow and test all this stuff out. See if it's gonna work well with each other. I think it will though. Also, as you can see, this little red, all them little red line, that's from me mixing on bus three. So if I was on this scene, I could see Ant mixing bus three. And it's like, okay, that's his line and stuff right there. So anyway, we're gonna try to get sound two. To this mic. So I'm gonna turn up my main, my mic on my main. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. As you see, there's level sound coming out, but we don't hear nothing. Check one, two, check one, two, check. Let's go back up to this tab button right here. That game, uh, game um, section. So we're going to raise up our mic gain a little bit. You're going to see me in real time operate this tablet. All of it's going to be on show. Every scene that I'm doing on here, I'm going to pull it up on here for y'all to see. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Check one, two. Now you hear the microphone coming through the seat. The sound system and everything. But remember, I have fixed, right? So let's go and do that. First, we're going to do this. We're going to back out of that real quick. And we're going to screw all the way down to our effects right there. So what you can do, since you're with your mains, you can go in. We're going to turn these effects up. Just put them all at neutral or unity. So we're all at unity. Check one, two. But we don't have effects going in. Remember, I told you my effects are on a master mixer. So we're going to go to layers, the DCA plus effects channel. That's what we're going to go to right now. And remember, all my effects are routed into DCA 4. So I'm going to bring up 4. So that should have effects, right? Check one, two. Check one, two. No, I don't. Remember, I will go back to all channels. I took effects right here. This little tab right here, this where all them buses and stuff. I took effects out. So I'm gonna go tap right there. I'm gonna add my effects in. Hey, I'm going to bring this down so y'all can see what I'm doing right here in this effects section, too. So, I'm going to add my reverb. Check one, two. Check one, two. There's my reverb right there. Turn it down a little bit. Check. And then I'm going to mute that channel. So, check. There goes my effects right there. I have reverb set. I'm going to add some delay. Check. 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 I'm going to turn the delay down, mute it. I'm going to add my tube. Check one, two. Check one, two. Got that warm sound to it. I'm going to mute that. And then add my chorus. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. There's my chorus. So... Um, yeah, then I muted all of them. Now I'm going to unmute all of them. Check one, two. Check one, two. There's my effects on that. And if I... I'm going to go back. I wish this thing could come with me in real time. And we'll jump to the screens like I'm doing on my iPad. But I'm come back to right here to that DCA channel. And 
Remember I said my effects are all on DCA4? Turn those down. Check one, two, check. Check one, two. So, whenever they talking, I can turn off my effects. When they start singing, I can turn them back on. I'll have to push up a fader. Or if I wanted to, I can mute that. Leave them on at that fader. Check one, two. And then mute that fader real quick. Or, I'm trying to see if I got... Okay, so I put my mute group four. Mute group four is on my effects. So I can quickly mute that group from everybody. Not just in my mains, but from everybody. That's what you see, the little lights popping up at the bottom of the screen now. The little flashing right there in this little corner. That's, they muted. They muted now. We back in normal operation. We are good to go. Check one, two. Mute them. Check one, two. Check one, two. And we're back. So then, let me go to my all channels. Come back. I'm just going to mute my mic. So I, that mic is set. And I can go and do that with all these um, microphone inputs. So it has a right now. I have. Now, the one one I would need is to mix this for my stage monitors. Let's go to bus one. And I love this up here because it lets you see what's being bust out in real time. So, I'm on bus one now. None of my mics are going to do bus one, but I'm going to put my vocal mics going to do bus one. And as you see, this little blue line is moving right there. And you can see the fader going there. I'm adding that to bus one. I can take it out. So I can go over here, set bus one, and then do the, and then I can come over here and set the effects for bus one. The person that's, and this would be, um, well, I'm doing that. So I can add effects to their stage monitor if they want them or not. Or if they just want to hear their raw audio and just worry about effects for the house. I can do that. Bus two would be for the band. So where I would give, if I had another tablet, trying to see if I can make that happen. I would give it to Rodney and say, hey, mix for the band what you want. This is your effects and stuff. He can go in here and dial in the effects with the rest of the band and Ant will have his own, his own little world on channel three. Then I may put them subs on uh, bus four. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. And this is the greatest time to show y'all how the, you can go and uh, Cause I didn't, I didn't show y'all two more features on here. That's my bad. We have recording. Remember when I said you could do the USB thing? You can go um, plug a USB in there, and as soon as that USB hits in there, you can press record and record your whole show. It records those two channels. Now, the way I'm recording, I'm recording off of buses five and six, left and right. Um. So if I was to come to bus five, Six it says recording left. Six says recording right. And I will go and mix for them on um, two channels. Cause whatever I do on bus five and six is whatever I do on bus five, it should do it on six. In fact, that's a theory I haven't tested out yet. So let's see if we make that happen. I can't for some reason I can't even do it on there. I don't know why. Yep. There's going right there. You see that fader on bus five. We're on bus five right now, but it's acting as bus five and six. And how we're linked, it shows me what those two channels together are looking like. So I could do that. Oh, but like I said, I want to go and add a sub. So here's one thing I forgot to mention, show y'all, which is set up. Uh, you will start set up in general. You can choose your left last gate for uh, X, Y for your audio mix. You have your hard mute, so you turn those on. Uh, I think it mutes out the groups. I ain't tried yet. And if you want to reset your reset your mix to factory settings, you will press this and this shape button right here in this little tab. Next, you have network up here in this little tab window. You can go 
configure your Wi-Fi network and your router network and all that stuff over here, as well as see the uh, IP of the mixer itself and the IP of your Ethernet connection, all that good stuff. The IP of the network name. And you can open that up to anybody can join, or you can close to put security on it. But come to layout. So this is how you name your channels and all that stuff, and choose what color. I'm gonna make you can choose. And you can also bring up your di your different layers of channels right here, of what you want to see. I'm just gonna leave put my effects in my DCA on. I'm gonna go over here and make a change to the output. Cause since I have recording red, record left and record right in the red, I'm gonna take make my drums a different color than red. So I'm gonna make them. I'm gonna make them gold. Actually, no. I'm gonna make them. Make them white. I want to add color to it. Maybe a light blue. Let's make drums light blue. And has I made that change on there? This is how you select your buses. Which bus you want to come in. Right here, you tap right there. And then it pulls up your bus um, where you want. So, it could really, if you want, if I give Rodney an ant a pad. Ant. And Rodney could both play. I'm a uh, petty and go, like, say Rodney's mixing for auxiliary two and Ant's mixing for auxiliary three and press that and he opens up that. Oh, I can go to different uh, buses and stuff with auxiliaries. He can go to, Aunt, to Rodney's auxiliary two, that's for the band, and go mix for them. Although he, he could be just messing things up because he can't hear them. And just be petty like that. If you want to, or he could go to that stage monitor mix and go mix that if he wanted to, or he could go to recording level, the recording auxiliary, and mess up all the recording thing if he wanted to. I hope he doesn't. <laughs> but I made drones blue, and I'm gonna I'm make bus four my subs. And I'm gonna make that yellow. So now we got that done. I can go back. Now I'm gonna go to uh, shows, Main Street, and save all the changes I've done. That's gonna save all the changes. I can save it from the iPad too. That saves the show entirely. It saves Ant and Rodney's mixes. Oh, uh, it saves the main house mixes. Save what I would do for the um, monitor on the stage. It saves all that, and I can go back and recall it. This when if I close my computer down, turn my left um, tablet off, and don't come back to it like two weeks, two or three weeks, or come back to this app in two or three weeks and do other things on my computer i could just come back to this show if it's closed out and i'm just starting from scratch again just go tap that main street see press load and it will pull all that back up so that is and i find that fascinating i love that about it but there is that mixer in all Capacity and eternity. I'm so sorry this video is that long, but I wanted to show y'all everything. 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 I want to show y'all that. We're still in setup because I still see all these down here. You also choose if you want your faders to be wide or not on this screen. I think you can choose them to be wide on here too. Let's see. Yeah, you can. Because that's the reduced thing. I have my house on wide. 
also I want to show you this too. Y'all seen this is the uh the same thing on my tablet, the same thing on my computer, right? This is actually the X Air app on the computer that was meant for the iPad or whatever. But if you go to the Behringer site and download uh my X um X Air Edit. Then you have this one right here. I'm just going to open that up. This is the computer version of all that. And if you're asking, it does everything in real time too. See that fader moving up and down? See how it's muted right here? I can go in here and adjust things. It's got my little adjustments that I made on channel 1 and 2. If I wanted to go pull up that recording channel... You see both of those channels right there are working together for their good. Um, it's, it works in real time. And let me go back and let me just pull up this one real quick. Go back to my mains. I'm going to press enter because I think that's what get rid of the colors down there. Yeah, it does. I'll go to, let me go and open up all channels in that app instead of doing it from over here. So, and then back out. That's that main, oh, our mains right here. This is our mains right here. As you can see, oh, I'm on bus 4 on my tablet. I'm on main now. Both of these channels are working in the same thing. So you have, there's two different software set up on the uh, tablet, on the computer. And they're both working together in the same time. As long as your computer is on the same network, has the mixer, your iPad and tablet is on the same wide router network, just like you was copying to a Wi-Fi uh, signal. It's just like that it, it all works together. I could go pull this edit up on my PC right now if I wanted to and have it running this same screen and have this other screen just on this MacBook Pro and have one over there. So I have multiple points. If I, like, I, this may be my setup for a church or something. But, yeah. This is... This is the everything in its total, and let me just move y'all back to this open field look. It's not even pushed all the way back. But, all, all this box has surprised me a lot. I'm in love with it. And just the fact that I can do three different mixes on cap computers and stuff open, I I've actually wanted that in actual mixers where I can have two different mixers set up and can work between the two and have each of them mimic each other. And since I know about this, this is what I would like to install in the church. I could put this in the sound booth. I could have a, a laptop or iPad up there by me by the instruments. The warrior keyboard, wherever I'm playing drums, wherever I'm playing, and run on uh, front of house. I have this in a room somewhere else, and like a production, like a broadcast room or something, and have connections to that, and also be able to run the auxiliary apps up there. I actually love that so much, and I can have access to all those. So, I may, I'm gonna look into this more. But I hope I have answered anybody's question, fulfilled everybody's desire about this. This is a good thing. I'm sure about it. I love it. I think I'm the I'm like like I say when I get the money after I get out this space I'm broke. I'm gonna go buy the bigger brother of this because this thing kicks so much. I want it. But anyway, that's all for this product view. I love it. I totally recommend it. For anything, um, except for big shows, I would suggest still use that console. But for what it's worth, 
is definitely something that you need to have in your arsenal for whatever the occasion is in all of the capacity it would do if you're a small church and you know some and you have a sound guy that's tech savvy you can and will be there every Sunday or you have musicians and pastors that are tech savvy I would suggest this for your church you can give everybody what they want the personal monitoring thing the various access points to it the easiest setup and stuff and I'll say this the, it's once you get it it's easy to set up last night was my first night with it and I was going on YouTube trying to find videos to do things and I couldn't so once I kind of just dialed it and figured things out on my own it was easy to go from there and now I just feel like I'm the expert <laughs> with this thing now so I appreciate y'all for watching this video spending the time to just sit here and listen to me rant and ramble about why this is such an amazing product to have and have in your arsenal. I hope, please like, subscribe, comment on this video, repost it, share it, everything, share the channel. Uh, and like I said, I'm coming back to this thing of donating. Please donate to the GoFundMe. Um, I'm doing this campaign with uh, one for one. Or something like that well I'm asking everybody that watches this video to just donate a dollar you know if you a dollar can go a long way so I'm just asking y'all to donate that and help me grow this sound business so I can get more oh uh, I'm tr right now I'm trying to get transportation for my business right now I have my sister's um 2014 um please don't be an ad yes it's music it's 2014 uh, Nissan Altima. And it's the Nissan Altima. That's why I'm transporting everything in right now. And I need to get my truck worked on right now. I need to pay for that to get done. And I'm trying to get a box truck because we're trying to get more inventory in. We're trying to get some better speakers in trying to get lighting in we're trying to get an LED screen in and so we can offer more services to our area and then we can with transportation we can grow and we're located in Grambling Louisiana we cover we do events in Ruston Grambling Minden um maybe El Dorado is probably as far as we can get to and that's a stretch Really, we try to stay on campus because it takes me three or four trips to move things around if I don't have help. So, I'm asking y'all to donate so I can get a truck so I can start going out to more places like Texas, Mississippi, farther up uh, Arcadia so I can get paid for a team to get here and help us. Because we plan to dra dramatically increase and build a business here and offer everybody great quality high quality sound for a low low price that every that everybody else in my field is kind of not doing so what they would charge for ten thousand i'm charging like 400 <laughs> and doing what i can with that 400 so please donate to that donate to the gofundme donate to my zelle donate to cash app whatever you have I would really, really, really appreciate it a lot right now, especially right now, because this is struggle times right now. Uh, help me get my phone back on so I can answer y'all's calls and get business going and rolling. Until then, hit me up on IG or Facebook or Snapchat. I wouldn't suggest Twitter. I don't check Twitter. If you have Discord, oh, if you follow me on Discord, yeah, you can hit me up. But I'm not that big on Discord either. So Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat is kind of the three that you'll catch me in. As if you catch me at Wi-Fi signal. So thank y'all for watching this video. Thank you for tuning in. Thank y'all for just being an amazing audience. I hope y'all have a blessed day. Wherever y'all see this, I hope you have a blessed day. If your day is bad, it's going wrong, and you think this is just the worst, it will get better for you. I pray it gets better for you, and I believe that. Um, you having a good day, keep the vibe going, you know, do, do you, um, remember, 
to uh, be a blessing to somebody. Just help them out. You don't know how much that means. Even if it's just a smile and talking to somebody, you should be a blessing to somebody. Be the best person you can be. Appreciate y'all for rolling with me. Y'all have a blessed day.